I had not been back there in years, but it was the last place left to look. Those lost wishes weren't the treasure I was after. Those lost wishes weren't the treasure I was after. It was not exactly as I remembered it, but it wasn't all that different either. Trapsons guarded the lost treasure. I would have to turn one and see what happened. And that's what would have happened if I turned the left switch. But since I am here telling this story, you already know that I pulled the right one. and beds were jammed into every nook and cranny of that cave. It all seems so familiar. Even though the bed was very comfortable, this was no time to hide under the covers. As I was saying, <clears throat> this was no time to take a nap. All right, I took a brief rest before I decided to adventure on with that very important treasure. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Grandpa. I don't remember this part of the story. Beds hanging from stalactites? We'll get there, Gwendolyn. Don't no worry. No detail in this story will be overlooked. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. As I treaded through the river of rumbling trundles, I feared I knew the source of that deafening wind. Beneath a slumbering pile of teeth and claws was... Fabled Mirror! Oh, so you remember this part of the story. Well, dragons are my favorite. Do you want to tell this part? Yes. King Edward sent me, the greatest knight in all of Daventry, on a quest to return his stolen mirror. A gigantic, hulking beast of a dragon was the last thing in my way to... In my way to... <laughs> my way to add a shinier hat to my collection.
I tried to turn that crazy contraption, but it was missing a handle. Someone tampered with it, creating some silly conundrum. Volumes of old books with foreboding titles clutter the shelves of that strange bedroom. How to Tame a Dragon, Breaking the Spirit of Hideous Beasts, Amateur Spells to Impress Your Friends With. <laughs> no books about recovering missing handles, though. Guilty. I took a second nap. <laughs> so, the missing handle was booby-trapped? What did you do? Well, I used my cleverness to outsmart the trap. Then I use my cleverness to hide. Luckily, that half-blinded beast never noticed me in bed. A dragon's eye must be really hard to pierce with an arrow. At archery lessons, I can barely hit a hay bale. It is indeed a, a feat only for skilled archers. I tried to turn that crazy contraption, but it was missing a handle. Someone tampered with it, creating some silly conundrum. What did you use to fix the broken switch? Its chains were coiled around a gigantic switch mounted to the cave wall. This cave seemed to be filled with failed adventures. After he briefly basked in the sun, the narcoleptic dragon went back to snoring. I'd probably sleep all day too, if Amira was my only friend. After I was impaled by that spiky bed, I took a nap and decided the magic mirror could wait another evening before being rescued. Grandpa! Well, I thought maybe it was your bedtime, but I can continue.
wait a minute. Does this mean our family's immortal? Whoever designed this trap thought they were pretty clever, but I would probably find a way to hit that unreachable switch. The mirror called out to me. A ridiculous feeding contraption was cobbled together to keep the beast and probably its owner alive. Thank you. 
only a flesh wound. I guess you could say that river swept me off my feet. With the magic mirror safely in my possession, I dreamt of the Daventry I would be rewarded with, and the kingdom it could become. Choices in front of me. Any would clear my path to safety, and all would have rippling consequences. My arms could barely grip the rope, but with the last of my strength, I climbed out of the well and headed back to the castle. Ever since the magic mirror returned, its reflections have warned the kingdom of danger, kept our family safe, and it has exposed many troublesome crumbs tangled in my beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King Edward was so proud that you returned his lost treasure that he made you king. Everyone knows that part. Now, 
Can we get back to that dragon? Gwendolyn, there is so much more to my stories than dragons. I hope this old cap will be remembered for far more than the action tattered across its brim, sewn into the seams of many hidden adventures. All right, let's get back to the dragon. Tell me everything. Like, why did you set the dragon free even though he was trying to eat you? I set him free because, well, over the years I realized that the dragon was not the despicable, hideous beast Daventry had made him out to be. He was just a caged animal that was never shown any kindness. On that day, I forgave the dragon for his atrocious past. You have such a bizarre way of making friends, Grandpa. I guess I do, too. I'm known as Gwendolyn the Popular back home. But only to my stuffed bunnies. I've always found it best to pursue friends where I can, though they don't always feel the same about me. All right, you two. Grandpa needs to rest. Gwendolyn, it's way past your bedtime. Sleep well, Grandpa. I'll be back first thing in the morning. I don't need rest. I'm as spry as I've ever been, though I wouldn't mind a slice of magic fruit. Hello, cousin. Guard! <laughs> I'm glad you're finally here. He's been asking about you for days. I had to sit through the same story five times. We got here as fast as we could. And I like Grandpa stories, especially the ones with dragons. Ah, oh, yes, the legendary beast that he set free. I don't know if he forgets I've heard that story before or he doesn't care, but he loves telling it to anyone that will listen. I'm pretty sure I heard the nursemaids telling his same jokes in the hall. Have you heard anything the doctors are saying? Yes. Doctors, wizards, magic elves. Grandfather is fine, Gwendolyn. They all say the same thing. He's just old. He still has a few good years left. Look, we're all excited that your family made the trip, but there's no need to worry. You should get some rest. I'm sure you're scheduled for a full morning of Grandfather's hilarious ramblings. Oh, I'm also scheduled for the tournament tomorrow. Ah, oh, yes, the fencing tournament. You'll love it. I'm, of course, favored to win, and will make sure you have the very best seat to view my victory. The courtyard will be filled with important people and delicious hors d'oeuvres. Oh, um, I'm actually competing in the tournament. Hmm. I had no idea we were hosting a junior tournament. That's incredible. In that case, I will gladly be there to cheer you on and eat delectable appetizers. Nope. No junior tournament. I'll be squaring off against you. I see. Well, perhaps this is the time to stop listening to stories and finally make some of your own. Good night, Gwendolyn. Sleep well. Come in, Gwendolyn. You can set those on the nightstand. Grandma said to take three spoonfuls of each. I'll get to those. No need to fuss over me. Now let's talk about far more important issues. Like that fencing tournament. I hear you're competing. Well, I signed up, but I'm not so sure anymore. Nonsense. If it's Scott you're worried about, he's no bother. After all, I only learned that you entered after he complained about it all morning. Threatened, I'm guessing. There are many ways to win a duel. 
I, for one, have always been fond of... Treating my opponents with respect. You'll be surprised what opens up to you. A lovely fellow once told me the fastest way to anyone's heart is through their stomach. <clears throat> Speaking of, that reminds me of a story. One I know you haven't heard before. When I was a much younger lad, before I was a knight, before I'd been to Daventry, and even before I'd seen a dragon. It's a tale about a tournament that changed my life. It is a long story, but I shall tell it briefly. Well, Triumph, this looks as good a place as any to camp for the night. Let's rest up. We have a big day tomorrow. After gracefully rappelling down the cliff, I welcomed the sight of an actual road, the first sign of civilization. Grandpa! You can't leave Triumph! Don't worry, Triumph can fend for himself. We've been through our share of sticky situations, but he always comes around when I need him most. Daventry was just a few miles to the east. I'd read all about its wonders in my travel books. I couldn't wait to check out its famous fantastical floating island. I could have sworn the parade of hopeful knights was scheduled for the next day. I should have been with them, marching with triumph. It seemed my first few minutes at Daventry were off to a terrible start. So, how did you catch up with them? That odd horn seemed to be missing some sort of mouthpiece. The horn was broken, but that didn't stop me from blowing on it. Realizing a lot of people probably put their mouth on that horn, I was disgusted. I slowly backed away and never blew that horn again.
truth is, I didn't care about the germs. It was fun. Eventually, I got tired of blowing that horn and continued my journey. Okay, that's a lie. I blew on it one more time. It just made me feel good on the inside. All right, I'm not ashamed. I blew on that germ-ridden broken horn more times than I will ever admit. There's no need to even comment on it anymore. Strange tracks blazed a trail through the forest. I wondered what those birds needed a toolbox for. Shame. The only tool left seemed to be a small hatchet. And no, Gwendolyn, before you start asking me thousands of questions about that hatchet, I did not go around using it on everything. That wheel seemed freshly broken. Stand back, you 
of dirty thieves! Wah! Oh, it's just a boy. Don't know where he's from, but it must be hard to pronounce. You know, you should never sneak up on a guy in a dangerous place like... No! Oh! What's wrong with your foot? Probably stepped on a spiniferous thornweed. Don't worry, I got just the fix for that. <laughs> Tell me, is it more of a... Ow! Or a... Oh! oh! Either way, the Merchant of Miracles has got you covered. But it'll cost you... I've risked my neck to forge the most rare, miraculous, mysterious, and oftentimes delicious ingredients. Ah, here it is. I massage this into my skin twice a day, and just look at my little biscuits. Mm. Mm. Well, now that I've molded over, you'd better not. It might stunt your growth. Ooh, such exquisite material. Hey. Mm -hmm. I knew you weren't from around here. Well. You best get going. Yeah. Nobody likes a late night. Oh, wait. You're stuck here with me. Every bridge in is out. And my shortcut had a few shortcomings. I swear that rock leaped straight out of the water. Now I'm stuck here with no wheel, a lost toolbox, and Mr. Fancy Cakes. Say, what? I'll bet a fine strapping young man like you could help me fix up this wheel. Yep, you help me fix my chariot, and I'll give you a lift to the tournament. Hopefully no one else notices your horrible lack of punctuality. Oh, how rude. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, could you repeat that? Try to keep up, son. Bridges out, failed shortcut, flying rock, wheel broke, be a strapping lad, get tools, fix wagon, get a lift to the tournament! Oh, can I pet your goats? Stay away from my majestic unicorns! Uh, unicorns? Uh, isn't that a bit of string right there? Da -da 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 -da, I said back away! Seriously, my boy, they aren't going to pull this chariot without a wheel. I know. They're the most majestic creatures in the world. Mr. Fancy Cakes, I saw that look in your eye. Don't you dare touch my unicorns. They're for looking only. No, Mr. Fancy Cakes, you cannot eat his cake. I know, I know. I wish we weren't returning here at this time of year, too. They haven't figured out eye transplants for unicorns yet, Mr. Fancy Cakes. Did you eat my retainer again? Okay, okay, have a nibble of cake. Oh, Mr. Fancy Cakes, you were always my favorite. Other one? Well, you keep doing you. Mr. Fancy Cakes, can you tell Two Eyes to stop chewing so loudly? Just a little oop here. Find me a wheel, boy. Anything big and round should do the trick. Other one. Are you sure you deserve to be a unicorn? Your heart just doesn't seem to be in this. Other one. I know we're stuck here, but it doesn't mean you have to make our air quality <laughs> inhospitable. Perhaps there was a wheel on the other side of that river. Too bad I couldn't swim. How did you get across that river? away from my unicorns. I'm warning you. Hey, hey, stop it. Those unicorns may look cute and cuddly, but they are ferocious fighters when provoked. You do that one more time and I won't be able to quell Mr. Fancy Cake's vehement temper. Hey. Uh. <laughs> How did his cape taste, Mr. Fancy Cakes? That missing wheel had me stumped. I had to go out on a limb to get past the root of the problem. Ugh, Grandpa, your infamous puns are not my favorite. What's the matter? You don't like the timbre of my voice? You'll warm up to the puns. These are terrible.
kitty, kitty, not a kitty, not a kitty! Hmm. No wheels are there. Still no wheels. Here, kitty, kitty, not a kitty, not a kitty! No wheels are there. Still no wheels. An overgrown patch of spiniferous thorn weeds obstructed a path to the water well. The well with the ginormous dragon in it? Perhaps. Why would you walk into a patch of spiniferous thorn weeds? Well, uh, <clears throat> I didn't. I thought about it for a while, though. I was thirsty. I tried to chop down those thorn weeds, but my tiny hatchet was ineffective. I would need a bigger, sharper blade. Square was eerily quiet. Was I the only person in Daventry not at the parade? Like me, this little tree was new in town and needed some time to grow and find its way. What? Too sappy? <laughs> I have nothing to say. You'll warm up to it. Can I squeeze by you, gents? No. We are here to guard the town entrance and keep out any riffraff whilst everyone is watching the parade. If we were to leave, rapscallions would run amok in the empty shops. Back away, boy. We are on the lookout for intruders. I stumbled upon some kind of curiosity shop. Nothing seemed to be brewing yet. Against the knickknacks was a little collection tray with a sign asking for tips. Aha! Something big and round. Hopefully no one would mind if I borrowed this tabletop. I put the table back and went looking for a new wheel. A 
bakery, and it smelled delicious. The delectable goods looked tasty, but I couldn't compete in this tournament with a full stomach. Aha! I didn't see any reason why that stale bread wouldn't work for a wheel. That sign was asking for tips, and there was a metal pan to collect coins. I decided to leave some coins for the bread. Ah, a shortcut. Here, kitty, kitty, not a kitty, not a kitty. Do I really have to hear the story about how you took forever to tiptoe across that fallen tree again? No, I guess not. I thought this might do the trick. Mm, lovely choice, boy. And thank the Yarble Snoops, this bread is beyond stale. Hopefully it didn't pay too much. You have a face that just screams overcharged. I've got just a fix for that, too. But we have important tournament business to tend to, and I think this'll do the trick. Ooh, I'll just need to start locking my unicorns up at night. Mr. Fancy Cakes has a nibbling problem. All right, off we go. Oh, wait, before my mind slips, I was able to procure an entrance ticket to the tournament. Since you so graciously found me a wheel, I am more than willing to sell it to you at a reasonably discounted rate. Are you interested? Oh, sounds good. I love a deal. <laughs> so do I, boy. So do I. If I see one, I'll let you know. Here you are. Now, let's Vamanusi from this Meadowland, Mr. Fancy Cakes. It is go time. Mr. Fancy Cakes! Ah, heal! Halt! Abyss! Stop! <laughs> We sincerely hope you enjoyed your stay in our luxury cabin. Please gather your belongings and watch your head on exit. Th th thanks for the hospitality. No time to lounge, my boy. Lucky for you, the parade is halted. Another case of a mysterious missing bridge, I imagine. Watch your step. We wouldn't want any tears in that illustrious cape. Bon voyage, buttercup. Don't forget about us working folk. Especially when your pockets are full of riches. The forest is blocked until this situation is under control. The forest is blocked until this situation is under control. Back away, back away. This area is unsafe for commoners. Hello, uh, apologies, I'm late. Uh, I should be on the list. First name Graham, last name- The list, unfortunately, is inside the theater, which is across that bridge, which is inexplicably missing. 
We've ordered a temporary fix, but we're still sorting out the work order. Well, with all the recent budget issues, I remain skeptical about the repairs. Well, can't those knights check the list? Do you mean Kyle and Larry? They're off duty. Don't ask. You needn't worry. These night hopefuls will figure out a solution soon, and then we can carry on with the auditions. Well, but I am a hopeful knight. If you just step aside, I'm confident that I can find a way across. Ahem. <laughs> Daventry Decree 6645 states that a royal guard, once commanded, must never, under no circumstances, abandon his post while on duty. Well, technically, Addendum 237A allows us to leave if someone is in distress and in need of assistance, of a life or death nature. I stand corrected, and we wouldn't want a repeat of the Rubenstern fiasco. A tardy auditionee, however, hardly counts for distress. Sorry, but we can't leave our post. King's orders. Come at me, bees! And then you chop down the tree full of angry bees? Enough, Gwendolyn. those rocks. It's dangerous. <laughs> Distress! Abandoned post! Learn how to swim, boy. Thanks for saving me. You're welcome, lad. He was talking to me. I believe he was talking to me. Nope, me. And then you chop down the tree full of angry bees? Enough, Gwendolyn. This tired argument is getting on my nerves. No need to argue about the fact that I am... Uh-oh. Uh oh, oh dear. Not good. Mind if I join your semicircle? Let us big kids figure this one out. <clears throat> your hero is thinking. Another horn and another missing piece. Well, I know the answer, but I want to see how all of you will solve it.
Imagine me! I left the hatchet lodged in the tree because I would not need it any more. Are you sure? Quite sure. Everyone always asks about that hatchet. It gets a tad annoying. Huh? Did you see that? I was almost across. Anyone? Don't help us. I'm intensely studying the various approaches of my competitors. Hang on a sec. Graham, right? Yes. Um, how did you know my name? Well, you'd be surprised at the information people give out when they're too busy thinking about their own agenda. I also observed that without you, no one could have made it across. Well done, Graham. Uh, thanks, I guess. They'll never acknowledge it, you know. Those who use their minds over their biceps are never woven into the tapestries of time. I can tell you're like me, a creative thinker, an intellectual. To win this competition, you'll need to prove that your talents are more powerful than their strength, agility, and speed. You'll also need a friend. I could really use a friend. They call me Manny. Pleased to meet you. So, friend, what's your favorite color? Do you like popcorn-flavored jelly beans? Because I do. What's your availability for sleepovers? Are we in a secret club? <laughs> Green. I prefer pizza flavored. I'm free on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and I would say more of a secret alliance. Alliance? This competition will not be easy, and Daventry needs men like us. If we put our heads together, we might have a shot. What's the plan? If you win, put a good word in for me with the king. And if I win, I'll do the same. Soon, we'll both be moving up the ranks in the castle together. We should head inside the theater, though. Let me know how I can help.
Graham, to the front of the stage, please. Now that we have recovered our list, it is my duty to inform you that you are officially signed in. Yay. And I do want to apologize. I am very, very terribly sorry. But we've run out of commemorative tote bags. That's not a problem. I have no use for tote bags. My mother designed my cape with lots of pockets. Is the next event about to start? Not so fast, Pocket Boy. The tournament bylaws explicitly state that each contestant must complete every event before continuing on in the competition. Since you were late, you missed the test of chivalry and the welcoming parade. Both designed as light-hearted warm-ups and getting-to-know-you type exercises. You know, an icebreaker before we start in on the usual death, destruction and duels of a cutthroat nature. Don't forget about Amendment 70, Article 4. I was getting to that, thank you. In the spirit of equal opportunity, the new rules state that you can schedule a makeup chivalry test if and only if the circumstances for your absence were extenuating. So, I will ask, what were your extenuating circumstances that made you late for the tournament? Well, I, I never heard the date was switched. Mm-hmm. I'll just pencil in hard of hearing. Now, go on, mingle with the other contestants, find out as much as you can about them, and when you're ready for the chivalry test, come and see me. When we see your special... You see this one, little better one? Hey, uh, thanks for knocking that log over out there. Really, it gave me the opportunity to go on a lovely cruise. Those knights were annoying me, and I wanted some alone time. Leave me be, little fly. You don't want to wake the bull. Look, I, I don't want to be in this conversation any more than you do, but I missed the chivalry test, and I need to make it up. The faster we get this over with, the faster I can leave you alone. Well, make it quick. Then buzz off. I'm Graham. Graham Cr No. No last names. I don't even want your first name. And your name? I'm known throughout the land as Sir Conference, but I am currently in the process of rebranding myself, starting with my name. You should call me Acorn. What was that you were hiding in your paws? Well, none of your business, feather boy. Seriously, what are you hiding? Is it a snack? Leave it alone, string bean. Seriously, what are you hiding? Is it a snack? Leave it alone, string bean. What was your name again, Sir Fatso? Uh, it's Acorn. Get it right or pay the price. I'll leave you be. Go away. The treasure that was within. I could feel... Hey there, I'm Graham. Charmed, I'm sure. And your name... What? Well, I, I didn't catch your name. What? Is this true? <laughs> Surely you jest, Greg. What rock did you crawl out from? <laughs> How do you not recognize this well-proportioned face? Well, it's not Greg, it's Graham. And uh, of course I know who you are. You're... you're... Every woman's dream? You got that right. The ladies love, 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 love. Yeah. Who? Who? Who do they love, Gabe? It's not Gabe, it's... Oh, never mind. Yes, your name... Uh, you are... You're... Going to have to wait one second. I'll be right back. I'll be waiting right here, Garrett. Oh, hey, Graham. We were just sharing some tips about the tournament. Let me know if you want the rundown about any of our competitors. What can you tell me about Sir Ten of himself? That's so inconsiderate. Although clever, these silly puns are not very becoming to a gentleman like yourself. Go meet everyone, then come talk to me. I've got a few tips to share. I'm good. Thanks, Manny. Goodbye. Hello. My name's Graham. Nice to meet you.
Achaka. So, where do you hail from? Achaka. I see. Sounds exotic. So, um, what type of arrows do you fly with? Achaka. Nice, nice. I prefer the hand-whittled sapling arrows myself. Want to partner up? Show Daventry the power of dueling archers? What do you say? Achaka. Yeah, you're right. You'd probably just slow me down. Good chat. I'm gonna get back to the chivalry test. <laughs> what do you want? I'll leave you be. You need to get lost. Yes, Graham? You want some dirt on someone? What can you tell me about Achaka? I'm studying his every move. He should make any opponent quiver. <laughs> you got me doing it now. He's fast, strong, and vicious with his bow. I'm trying to convince him to join our alliance. But the translation isn't quite working. What can you tell me about Acorn? I can tell you not to mess with those bull horns in any strength competition. I shouldn't be telling you this, but I heard a rumor that the man keeps a pet squirrel under his belly. What kind of a weirdo does that? Imagine what else he's hiding under there. Neither of us is going to be able to match his strength. If we're going to oust him, we'll need to work together and expose his secrets. I'm good. Thanks, Manny. Goodbye. It's nearly un... Mm. Okay. You again? I, uh, heard what you're hiding. No, you didn't, skinny pants. I did. I heard a rumor that a tiny squirrel pet lives under your belly. What? Who told you that? I bet it was Whisper. He's the worst. His ego is the one thing I can't stomach. And she, well, she's not my pet. She's my friend. Does your squirrel friend have a name? I wish Whisper would keep his big mouth shut. Her name is Princess Madeline of Avalon. She's a proper lady. What else is hidden in that belly? The bones of a feather boy if you don't leave me alone. I think you're hiding something else in there, but I'm not sure I want to find out. I'll leave you be. Scram! Every monster unveiled itself. It bared its teeth in a grin, wider than my arms could stretch. Yes? Have you remembered my name? Whisper. Correct. Well, Whisper's full name is Sir Walter Harris Ignatius Sally Percival Eduardo Ramon Jr. The third. Hailing from Modesto. But I'm sure a fan like you knew that. Would you like an autograph? Huh, I don't seem to have any portraits on me. Well, if you find one, I'll sign it. Free of charge. Whisper loves his fans. Whisper loves the knighthood. Whisper loves thwarting evil. But most of all, Whisper loves Whisper. As do we all. I should be getting back to my chivalry test now. Don't go! Whisper can do it! That's a nice thought, but I'm pretty sure those guards would never confuse you for me. I mean, your armor is pretty recognizable. Whisper's armor is shiny, because Whisper loves his own reflection. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Good day, Whisper. Yes, Graham? You want some dirt on someone? What can you tell me about Whisper? Whisper? Huh. His feet might fly by without a sound, but his mouth never will. A shining star in his hometown, he hopes to rebuild his fan base in Daventry. I've heard he'll do anything for the spotlight and can never be outshined. People at Arrakan are usually primed for a fall. Don't you think so? I'm good. Thanks, Manny. Goodbye!
Back it up! Back it up! Are you ready for the chivalry test? Let's do it! Question one. Who is the only knight competing in the tournament that speaks multiple languages? A chaka. All right, next question. This knight hopeful hails from a land far outside of Daventry. Based on the odds, he is favored to win the competition. Whisper. Okay, moving on. What is the full name of the fastest contestant in the competition? Sir Walter Harris Ignatius Sally Percival Eduardo Ramon Jr. III of Modesto. I'm sure of it. I see. Last question. Who or what is the favorite companion of the strongest competitor? Princess Madeline of Avalon. She sounds quite charming. Okay, let's see here. Tallying tallying it looks like you got two answers correct why don't you go and mingle gather some more fun facts about your fellow competitors return to me when you're ready to take the test again are you ready for the chivalry test let's do it question one who is the only knight competing in the tournament that speaks multiple languages Manny we're friends you know we have kind of an alliance Next question. All right, next question. This knight hopeful hails from a land far outside of Daventry. Based on the odds, he is favored to win the competition. A chaka. Okay, moving on. What is the full name of the fastest contestant in the competition? Sir Walter Harris Ignatius Sally Percival Eduardo Ramon Jr. III of Modesto. I'm sure of it. I see. Last question. Who or what is the favorite companion of the strongest competitor? Princess Madeline of Avalon. She sounds quite charming. Okay, let's see here. Tallying, tallying. It looks like you got all the answers correct. Great job, Pockets. Now, we shouldn't keep your new friends waiting, should we? Let's start the show. Welcome, everybody. You were all here to win a knight position on King Edward's court. But that's not all. As you all know, tragically, the king has no heirs. So, this position could very well lead to the crown of Daventry itself. Now, let's officially commence the competition part of the tournament. I do hope you've all made friends, because it's about to get nasty. The time has come to collect your entrance tickets. Oh, uh, oh over here! Over here, I got mine right here! I'm sorry, I really am, but that is not an entrance ticket. In fact, from up here, it looks like a, a sweaty piece of cloth. Oh, probably just a snot rag. <laughs> Each night hopeful will need to bring back to the theatre, dum 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 one eye of a hideous beast. And, due to Proclamation 1748.2, it will actually need to be a hideous beast. Not like last year. No adorably cute, fuzzy, or tiny creature eyes will be accepted. Thank you. Nothing to see here. There are many hideous eyes to find in Daventry. We urge you to take this opportunity to show us your skills. We want to know what's in your heart, how you think, and how you react in the face of danger. You might not believe all that can be interpreted from one eye, but we will still judge you all the same. Now, everyone, go forth and claim thine eyes. Whisper! Mm. Ooh. Whisper can do it. Watch your step, kid. Oh, thanks. I know it ain't fancy, but it'll have to work for now. Amaya Blackstone, nice to meet you. Graham, the pleasure's mine. 
It's nice to see all these bridges are getting fixed. All these bridges? No, kid. This contract is over. Daventry can't afford me anymore. They can't even afford oil for the crumbler over there. My own invention, of course. Oh, what does a crumbler do? It lifts, it chops, it crumbles. Most importantly, it brings in the monies which are desperately needed. Been kind of rough around here lately. It seems that way. Daventry's been an interesting experience so far. Different from what I read in my travel books. Honestly, I'm starting to wonder if it's for me. Don't worry, kid. It's not you. This kingdom's been going downhill ever since the Queen died. And now, with the bridges out, no one can get into Daventry. It's really quiet. I hate the silence. I'm a woman of action, if you couldn't tell. Quiet towns don't pay the bills. I can see that. Well, I should get going. Perhaps someone's wandered into my shop. If you make it there, come say hi. I'm on the left. 